And, and then just back once. And then they opened the Chicago drainage channel, which got all the sewage completely out of the lake um, and down the Mississippi River <laughs> in 1900. So the author concluded the introduction of pure water explains 30 to 50 percent of Chicago's mortality decline. Other interventions had much smaller effects. And finally, this was the uh, death rate from typhoid fever. The author believes that it was the beginning of chlorination that caused the decline. This is mandatory pasteurization right here. Okay. Okay, I think we're running out of time, so I'm going very quickly. Uh, it's, there are many, pasteurization does not uh, kill all pathogens, and we now have heat-resistant pathogens and spores and so forth uh, that are in raw milk. So it's a myth that pathogen, pasteurization kills all pathogens. And uh, this is, you know, people may not realize what commercial raw milk is, is about. You know, these big tankers. And how do they clean out those tankers? You know? Okay, fine. Uh, this is a pasteurization plant. By the way, these are very energy intensive. This is one of the, the problems that they're finding now is that the, ener the energy costs to pasteurize uh, are a, you know, a big portion of the price of the raw milk. This is the inside of the plant. You see this, this is this, the plate here, and the milk goes very, through these very thin pipes, um, past this plate, and uh, gets um, superheated. Um, the interesting thing is once you pasteurize milk, it becomes real sticky, and so very harsh solvents have to be used to clean out these pipes. Next. And we also know that uh, pasture feeding uh, greatly reduces the amount of pathogenic bacteria in the cows. That's another big factor in the safety. Next. So in summary, raw milk is uh, safer than any other food. It is, after all, the only food suitable for the newborn, and the newborn has no immunity yet. It has its own built-in safety mechanisms. It's the only food that does. <clears throat> Claims that raw milk are unsafe are based on 40-year-old science and would not hold up in a court of law. So is drinking raw milk like playing Russian roulette with your health? Well, maybe if there are no bullets in the chambers. Next. So ensuring raw milk safety, um, we don't want to be, you know, casual about this. It's like all foods, we want to handle carefully. Uh, we want our raw milk to come from pasture-fed cows. Full fat. There are important components in the fat that are antimicrobial and strengthen the immune system. We want to make sure the cows are healthy. We know how to test for that. that, that this problem has basically been solved in the United States. We want to make sure that the milk is produced under sanitary conditions, immediately placed in cold storage, and that we have a regular testing program on the farm for somatic cell count and pathogens. And a very good guide is a, our guide to raw milk production by Tim Whiteman, available through the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund. So if you're producing raw milk, you really want to read this guide. Okay. Once again, all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Secondly, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as self-evident. Uh, we have made great progress in moving from the first to the second stage here. And I'm sure that uh, very shortly we will be in the third stage. And I think, I think, that's, I think we'll stop there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, by the way, I just want to say once again, the consensus among public health officials is that raw milk is an extremely dangerous food. So we don't want to be swayed by consensus science. Yes. Yes. Is two quick questions. Has there uh, been any studies between raw milk and fibromyalgia? And the second question, when uh, mothers give uh, donate to milk banks, is that milk required to be pasteurized? Uh, the second question first, yes, they do pasteurize the milk, which is a shame. The, the, there's just one organization that deals with human milk banks, and it's all pasteurized. Very, very un unfortunate. And we know from the studies it should not be pasteurized. I don't know of any studies on fibromyalgia. Uh, there are very few studies at all on raw milk, but we've definitely had reports that raw milk has helped fibromyalgia. I had, I had a question.
question. We've talked a lot about infant and children. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. And uh, do you recommend it for adults also? Yes, I recommend raw milk for adults. If you're an adult who likes milk, it should be raw milk. Now, everybody's different. My husband won't touch milk. He was a dairy farmer for 30 years and so won't touch milk. <laughs> but I'm a big milk drinker, so everybody's different. But we've had a lot of um, wonderful testimonials, people with osteoporosis, which is reversed, cancer uh, reversing, um, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. Uh, raw milk is a really good food for people who are sick because it's so easy to digest and easy to absorb the nutrients. It heals the gut. It uh, gets rid of pathogens, protects you against toxins. It's, it's just a wonderful food, a healing food. What effect does, does heat, I know we're not, we're not supporting pasteurization or, or that, but like if you're using it in cooking, like for say quiche or custards or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that the, um, you know, I think that's fine in small amounts. I don't think the kind of gradual heating on a stove or in an oven to make custard or quiche, quiche is, is going to be a harmful to a person with a good digestive system. But never use the microwave. Oh, never use the microwave on any food, yeah. Sally, you talked about how B12 is 100% absorb, absorbed in infants. How about for adults? Are yes, they... it would be, yes. Now, you want to make sure the milk has B12 in it. That means that the cow is on cobalt-rich pasture. Yeah. Okay, we've got uh, time for one more question, so. Sally, you never distinguish between cultured milk and non-cultured milk. Mm -hmm. Um, are there any differences, um, for example, some, like the GAPS diet for um, proving yeah. digestion recommends only cultured milk? Right. A cultured milk uh, is for some people easier to digest and much higher in bacteria. But I'm not totally sold on drinking a lot of cultured milk. In Chinese medicine, cultured milk would be a very cold product. And um, I think people can actually overdo the cultured foods. So yeah, some cultured milk is good, but if you're a big milk drinker, I would not make, I would not have it all be cultured milk. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I was going to ask you is, uh, first of all, is pizza, and raw cheese, and pizza is it okay? And number two, uh, so I guess what you're saying is that it will protect us against the coming H1N1 virus. Okay, first of all, pizza. Well, if you're, let's just say you're making homemade pizza and you put raw cheese on it. Um, you know, it's kind of ruins the raw cheese. <laughs> it's, it's the wrong use for all raw cheese. But let me talk about commercial pizza for a minute. What they're using in a lot of cheap commercial pizza today is called milk protein concentrate. That is used to make cheese. If you get those little things like grated cheese and it doesn't, they don't really change their shape when they're cooked. That's from milk protein concentrate. That is the most disgusting, highly processed type of milk that you could possibly imagine. Uh, uh, H1N1 virus, of course, we don't have any studies about raw milk and H1N1 virus, but I'm, I'm quite sure that it would uh, kill it because it kills viruses, you know, kills pathogens. Let me give you one last question. I was in Costa Rica for several mm -hmm. months. You can't buy milk down there other than Yeah, they're, I think they're doing two things. One is UV radiation, and the other is irradiation from... Yeah, yeah. Actually, I wonder, because the, the, U, the UHT milk with the aseptic package, that was developed in Italy, and it's sold all over Europe, and you don't have to refrigerate it. So I'm, I'm not sure what they're... But I know you can get raw milk in Costa Rica. Yeah, you have to go there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a shame. They should, you know, when you don't have refrigeration, you uh, either drink the milk right away or you culture it or you make cheese. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. And that's, of course, why they have raw milk cheese in Mexico. You know, it's, a, it's fresh cheese, but it's, it's, it lasts. Clabber? Yeah. Curds and whey? Two ways to eat. You're supposed to go to the other side first. That's uh, burgers, uh, grass-fed burgers, and something else.